I'm Coach Cal and this is an introduction to science, for physical science and physics. So first of all, let's answer the question, what is science? Science is a way of trying to understand nature. It explains what happens in the world and in the universe and why. Three categories of pure science are life sciences, earth and space science, and physical science. Life science deals with living organisms of all kinds, from the smallest to the greatest. Earth and space science deals with the Earth, its place in the universe, and how the universe originated. Physical science deals with motion, energy, and interactions between particles, between things. So, this covers physics and chemistry, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in these courses. The scientific method is basically a set of steps in a process that show you how investigations are done. The first part of the scientific method is to state the problem. It's to ask the question that you are trying to solve. It's as simple as that. Once you've asked that question, background research is important. To look at what other people have already found out. There's no point in redoing something or going down an avenue that has already been tested, so why do it? The second step is a hypothesis, which is an educated guess. It's an educated guess, which means it's logical and it's not random. If your hypothesis is not correct, then that's fine, as long as your conclusion states that your hypothesis was not correct. The experiment is the part where you test the, your hypothesis. It's more fun because you actually get involved in doing something, trying it out, seeing if it works. You have to put a lot of thought into, into the experiment because it needs to be closely related to the hypothesis. It needs to show that your hypothesis is either correct or not correct. Taking the information that you get from your, from your experiment, you get your analysis and conclusion. This is where you review the, your data and look at it to see whether your hypothesis was correct. It's more important now to be impartial and unbiased than to be correct. If you look at your data and it doesn't tie in with what you expected, then it's important to say so. My hypothesis was wrong is a fine answer in science. Variables, constants, and controls. When we do experiments, we have variables which change, constants that we keep the same, and a control to give us a baseline. When we use variables, generally we try to change one and see what changes with it. The one that we change is known as the independent variable. The one that changes because of what we have changed is dependent on that and that therefore called the dependent variable. When we do controlled experiments, we only want to change one variable at a time so we can see that that is what gives us the result that we expected. Everything else stays the same. Doing an experiment under controlled conditions means being able to control these variables and not have external influences. Modeling is a way of simplifying what's happening to just see the effects that we want to look at. And there's many different types of models. You can model something via a diagram. Magnetic fields are a really good example of this. Formulas are actually mathematical models. E equals mc squared, for example. Models can also be simulations. They can be computer programs that react the way that you would expect them to act. And they can be physical models, models of atoms, or in this case, a model of a bridge. Laws and theories. They may sound like they're the same and we may use them casually together, but laws and theories are actually very different. A law describes an observation. It states what it has been seen. It gives no reason why something happens. For example, the law of gravity will state that when the apple comes off the tree, it will fall to the ground. It won't give a reason for that. It will just say that the apple will fall. Theories. Theories are different to laws. Theories try and explain and give a reason for something happening. And they're based on a large number of 
experimental results that have confirmed that this seems to be the case. A theory is something that can always be replaced. It is not hard and fast. And it only takes one piece of experimental data that can be repeated and shown that this theory does not hold for that theory to need to be replaced by a different one. Science doesn't stand on its own. Science, math, engineering, and technology are four areas that are very closely tied. Although science and math are very pure and engineering and technology are very applied, they all work together to enhance each other. Here are my references. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Now what I need you to do is make notes on the things that we've covered, do the examples that were shown in the PowerPoint, if any, write down any questions, at least two, and be prepared for continuing this stuff. We're going to carry it on in class when I see you. Okay, goodbye.